So let's have a little bit more fun and we'll build up off of the last video where we created this thing and started modeling this out. Now this of course was based off of a very generic reference. Uh, I got a huge mood board with just a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, but this was uh, mostly based off of the exoatmospheric kill vehicle, if I can find it, which is this thing here. There's a couple different photos of that in here, but um, that in particular thing is what kind of used for the front here, right? The cylindrical piece, but you could consider the, uh, the back section there uh, something like an HVAC system, right? Heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Let's see if I can find one. Something like this, right? And so as you just block these things in and you kind of set them up, they, they look pretty interesting. But the idea is that you can just kind of, you know, concept model and create your own things that you want to create. And with that in mind, when I'm looking at these references, I want to look at little key things in here. Like, how is this wall laid out? This is a bunch of paneling for a wall. And there's just all this uh, extra stuff on it. But what about this, right? Like the little panels here in the back. How are they working? How are the structural supports working? So we can do this with architecture too, where we just take little details and start to build up our own ideas off of them and um, have a little bit of fun with it. You know, don't get too caught up in those details right off the bat. Um, but do use the, uh, the basic ideas, the forms, the shapes of them to kind of come up with new things, new and interesting things. So if we're going to do environment, you know, looking at something like this, you would think, oh, this is inside of an aircraft. This is like a bomb bay. Um, yeah, we could, you know, try to model this all one-to-one -one and make it precise and accurate. Uh, but we could just take ideas here, like the um, the wiring, for example, here on the side. We could just run with that. Maybe we're making a, um, a wall. Maybe we want it to look really interesting. So we do some paneling like this with a bunch of rivets and stuff. There's all kinds of little details we can extrapolate from this. Or extract from it anyways same with like space stations and see how that's going in here so um, but generally you want to look for those little little details like this stuff here you can make these bigger you don't have to leave them small they don't have to be realistic in size you just make them larger if you need to so see here that uh, if we were to look at like say let's find one that's kind of interesting this one's kind of interesting I like this some stuff going on here. Maybe we do something like that for the ceiling. You know? And then we got maybe we could do something like this for the wall. There's all kinds of different things we can pull. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, when you're concept modeling, you're not always worried about 100% being like creating modular kits or refined artwork necessarily. Like it, it needs to. You need to solve issues when you're concept modeling. That's usually the, the main thing. So like working, you know, with absolute grid snap, of course, is useful. So you can keep things relatively placed well, okay? But you don't have to worry about necessarily having it broken down to the most granular pieces yet. You could do like whole sections of buildings, whether it's made properly or not, doesn't necessarily matter as much. You're trying to answer those problems you're having though, like are these going to be hard edges, chamfered edges, or are they going to be um, more generic like in nature? Like if I need a wall, like how tall does this wall need to be? Right? If I have a um, a character and throw them in, how big is this thing? Right? You can see that took a little while, but this thing's pretty large the way it is right now. I'm actually not opposed to it being this large, but it is very large, so you know. Think about how much detail you might you might need to create on this. Whether you're going to have to put little bolts or nuts and screws, and just random stuff everywhere, right? So keep that in mind. If you hit Shift tilde key W A S D and hit G. You can actually turn on gravity, and you can run around like it's a first-person shooter with W A S D, right? And uh, kind of see and get a feel of what's going on in here. Personally, I would drop the focal length a little bit to something like 40, 35, something like that over here in view. And that way you have a little bit wider of a view and you can kind of see what's going on in here. A little bit easier. You can mouse wheel up and down to increase or decrease speed. Uh, but yeah, we could see that this is, yeah, it's pretty interesting. We could work with something like that. No idea what it is exactly, but for the most part it kind of works. So, what about the wall? What can we do with that? 
Well, I don't want to do big, big sections of wall that are like this, perhaps right off the bat, but maybe one like this. I'm going to separate it, place the origin point down here. Just keep in mind, I'm going to be using machine tools and all kinds of fun stuff and try to turn this on. I use custom shortcuts and hotkeys, so a lot of times this, if it was a regular like show screencast keys or something, it wouldn't show what I'm doing, actually. So just keep that in mind. This one we can delete. So maybe, well, maybe before we even get to that point, actually, like we have the um, the floor here. Maybe we want to design like a whole room, right? We don't have to just limit ourselves. Like we can we can try to figure out like a floor plan here. Maybe there's like some interest going on with like walls that go back like this, or maybe we just want to pull one out and do that. All kinds of little stuff we can try to figure out because it's concept modeling at the end of the day. We're not worried about making perfect assets right yet. We're trying to figure out how we want this thing maybe positioned in here. Uh, this particular piece, I've already grouped it together. So if you have machine tools, you hit Control G, it creates a group. What it is, or what it's doing anyways, is it's just parenting everything to one of the objects. Or basically it creates an empty at the medium point and then it parents it all to that so once you uh, select everything you need you hit control G it's going to uh, create a group and once you have a group created with machine tools you just select a piece of it and then shift double click and you can select that group and you can see that's where the, uh, the empty is there so grouping can be quite useful there's another little thing we can do because um, if I was to take this and start moving it you'll see it's really sluggish Let's unselect that background. There you go. It's really sluggish because it's got a bunch of live booleans on it and uh, other stuff just going on. So uh, you might want to do that for only one of these. Otherwise, it becomes like uh, too sluggish and too slow. So an object like this, when it's grouped, you should be able to uh, take that, throw it into a collection. Let's see if this works, because I have cutters on it still. I might have to take the cutters and put them up there with it, but um, this plane here, for example, I'm going to move to uh, scene collection for a second. This reference, I'll move to scene collection. So I have a collection just with this piece in it, okay? So if I select only that collection and move it, you can see it seems to be working okay. So we can take that collection, right-click it, and we can go ahead and tag this as an asset, mark as asset. All right, when we do that, we can go to our current file. And now we have a, a backup over here. We can drag and drop it in. Notice that it gets rid of all my colors, which is a little unfortunate. But that's uh, something you could do. But it is an instance, at least, of sorts. So if you wanted to you know, see what it would look like in a room with maybe three of these lined up, you can do things like this and just uh, have a little bit of fun with it. So for a little... Quick little setup here. So we got maybe three, maybe this all goes back to like some kind of control panel back here or something that we need. Who knows? Maybe we want a control panel. For it. And now we can go ahead and pull that forward a little bit. It's a little off since some weirdness going on in here, but maybe it's just like this crazy control panel back here. That we want and it has like several maybe little sections to it maybe they're all different sizes there's like a small one over here a big one there who knows maybe there's a little desk thing that pops out where's that guy at? let's take him and drag him over so now we can start to figure out really what we want going on here and figure out if this is Kind of the shapes and dimensions and whatnot that we want. So maybe we do 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 something like that. I want this to be a little bit different. I don't want to bring it in down here at the bottom. So we could do like a boolean, but it probably wouldn't work that well. Um, something that I tend to do is separate things with Y, but that's not even going to work in this case. We really need to just run loop cuts. Kind of the corners here. Just push all that back with an extrude. 
symmetrize it if you got mesh machine or use a mirror modifier. Yeah, so we can do, you know, maybe something like that and then maybe bring all that in as well. Maybe this section we could just taper it or something. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's all kinds of little switches and stuff in here and you need to access them or whatever. This is where concept modeling will take you though. Like now you can start to figure out like do you need that stuff and how does it work and would it really need to be this tall, right? I don't think it needs to be that tall necessarily. So let's bring that all down. Maybe something more like that. Press F, fill that. All right, so eventually it might get like little computer monitors or whatever else you might need for this particular piece. Just start creating the ideas that you need. Maybe there's, maybe there's like a couple computer monitors or something. Let's take that one and scale it like that so it's more widescreen like. Right, and of course, you know, computer monitors you gotta have. Somehow how it mounts in the back. Usually things like this anyways. So this could be just a placeholder. You can always detail this stuff later. You don't have to do it right now. But you want to get the size right, the overall shape and volume. And you know, Is that too big or is it too small? What a, is it placed right? Does it need a better uh, pivot point maybe? Just to uh, snap it to the surface perhaps. I went over this in the last video, the snapping part, but you can see if you do that. That's cool, but these are all, yeah, I don't think it should go on him, but it's fun. Anyways, uh, these could just go wherever. And so we could start, you know, setting up little little things here or there. Like maybe this all needs to um, come down right here. So I'm going to press um, E and extrude down on Z. Oops. So grid snap. There you go. X side, delete A and merge by distance. Yeah, so could do something like that maybe. Pull E extrude manifold, push it in. Boom. There. there. So we might want to run that out. We could figure out how to make like modular setups like this later on if needed, but for now we'll go with this and that's what we got. Maybe we want to modify these later and have these all be the same model. So we can control L, select, select, whoop, select, select. Select Control L, Link Object Data. So now that they all link together, when I modify one, it modifies all of the others, just like that. So it's going to save us a lot of time doing that. Also, because of the way these are set up, I should, if I modify one of these, it will modify the others as well. See? All right, now, uh, it doesn't mean we're near done with this thing. Maybe we want two different wall units that we could intermingle with each other. So we could say like here, this is going to be four meter tall for the base. And then this one will be a big one on top of it. Maybe this is a, a different unit setup. It's actually, you can see it's six. It's usually a good idea to try to use the same kind of um, multiples. So like this should probably be an eight while this is a four. And you can get away with using like twos and ones and uh, breaking things up in all kinds of interesting manners. But we could do like an inset, extrude it. And now we might have something like that going on, which is great. We could try poking this face. And these little sections in here, uh, we should be able to inset, press I. This is improper. We would do a detailed version of this later on probably. But if we wanted like a big cross-section like that we could do that potentially you know place what you need though ultimately like you have to solve like your style like what you're trying to create you have to figure out you know you're trying you're trying to figure out or solve questions you have like what is this wall supposed to really be like at its you know, main patterns main shapes all that fun stuff right not trying to do every little detail, but you know, some edge detail, some 
tertiary shapes perhaps, but its big primaries and secondaries are extremely useful. So that might just exist there for now, but might be able to just grab that whole area, separate it, place an origin point down here. Okay, and you can see we had some other walls in here. Um, they probably don't line, this one probably doesn't line up with them. But we could try, you know, setting this out like so in different areas. And see if we can't get it all to line up with each other. That maybe goes there. See, we weren't on the grid. So it doesn't work really well as a modular piece either. This is where you, you will probably figure this out later. Not necessarily right now. Although you can still keep it in mind. I'm going to delete these ones. You can see this would all need to go out further. You can see, like, we might, we might need another piece for this one here. But, we do have section kind of going now. Okay, and it's not technically correct, but it's not like the way a real modular uh, section would go. You see, they don't quite line up to that one meter grid. Just kind of all over the place, but... It'll get you in the ballpark, at least. So, if I symmetrize this across here, I should be able to take these and mirror them across as well. So, it's very, f like, flexible. You can do pretty much whatever you got to do right now. Just have fun with it. Right, so you can create doorways or whatever else, but remember, work off your references too. Certain pieces are, could just be a little bit more interesting um, if you do them in that manner. So that rooftop might be curved, like the whole rooftop. So we could do like a cylinder for now, uh, just to get it kind of laid out and see what it might look like. And we can make it like a little modular system later on, perhaps. And um, it's pretty hard to snap that thing when you're scaling, but it's possible. But I might have got it off. Maybe I flip this, all in, flip normals. Turn on back face calling if your model doesn't do this. There's a reason why you want back face calling to not always um, just show backwards faces. Because sometimes it's just way easier to be able to make like an interior section without focusing on fighting the backside here, right? I would say that's way too rounded in general. Like it's too much going on there. Maybe we shrink it down. Let's just do that. Now that might even fit all the way up to this wall. Okay, if we want to turn these into windows at some point, we could. This is a little confusing, but basically we could take these segments and delete them. This is sort of how you would do a modular system as well. Like usually you would spin this all the way out, but I'm just going to copy the value and then do it up here as well. Paste the value, so Control C, Control V. Delete all that side. Now this whole area here, and this one. Inset, hold Control, push it out. X, delete faces, bam. So now I can mirror it on the mirror, bisect it, make sure, okay. And now we can also array this using hard ops, but uh, if you press S, it snaps. 
you do that. Okay. So we got like maybe this like big dome thing up here. Which is kind of nice. It's not too bad. I'm going to reuse this one. I'm going to separate it. Just pull it up. I'll place a pivot point in the corner. And then flip it. Okay, so just a, a filler there. Same thing can happen over here, for example. This piece, I'm going to apply the um, array, mirror and the array. Although normally I don't advise doing that if you don't have to, but I'm going to grab this edge, which is really hard to see apparently. I just want to press F and fill it so that it doesn't have a big hole there. This section we could just do a fill across there, separate it if needed. So we have that, that. This we could separate if needed as well. This gives us opportunity now to kind of go through this whole project and, uh, and work with it. You can also take these ones, if we didn't want to make like what looks like a window, there's nothing that says we couldn't fill all this stuff here, right? We could fill only half of it, maybe. I don't know why it would do that, but, you know, stylistic choices, you can make whatever you want. Maybe we need um, I-beams. So when you enable geometry extras, I think these shadows are slowing me down. Let me turn them off. These shadows will cause you to render everything twice, basically. But it gets sluggish. Yeah, much nicer. So um, if we were to say if we enable edit preferences add-ons geometry extras, part of the extras is beam builder, which is really nice. Um, the beam's back there. It's hard to see. Let's go to it. Um, but this beam, we can change it from a box profile to an L profile, an I profile, or a T. We'll do I for now. You can see how that worked out. You can also change things like its depth. So if you want to do like a larger section, like 8 meter section, you could do that. You could do a 4 meter. It just really depends on your needs. This would usually be made with a trim sheet. So just keep that in mind. Trim sheet, you can have repeat infinitely. So you could use, you know, on a, a steel structural support with a, you know, as much uh, length as you need and keep it all as like a single triangle, basically, or really basic triangles. So if I just wanted to scale this out, that could be a modular component at some point, just being a really large section. And maybe put it right there. It's a good idea when you're doing things that are meant to hang from the ceiling as well. That you put their origin points on the top side of it. Usually that works out better. For our situation here, I'm just going to run it from the front to the back. I'm going to snap it along the way. This gets squirrely with hard ops for some reason. Um, you can just go ahead and mostly set it up. It's using constant offsets, so we can do four. And you'll see that's that's okay. But we can maybe do like um, eight and then bump the count down. So we can do things like that. So now we have some structural support, and it kind of defeats the purpose of all this going on up here, in my opinion. you got to remember, while you're working on this stuff, you think about your art fundamentals. You're like, if this is the whole shape here, right, um, how much are we breaking it up? You know, like how many times? You know, look for those kinds of things, like how much is detailed compared to not detailed. These are like secondary shapes. These are like primaries almost. So we can work these kinds of things. Uh, sometimes you have to do things because it's more realistic. Having supports like this might be more realistic. But um, it also might be a little bit less realistic. Like maybe it depends on the foundation, like the structural foundation. Like if we have cross beams, maybe we don't need that many going in this direction for some reason. Maybe there's only every 16 meters or something, right? And so you can see where that's going. That's That's got a lot of um, excess there. That's kind of that's kind of about right, I think, actually. So maybe we only have a couple beams in there. You see how it looks less noisy, there's less stuff going on up here. That's good, that's really what you want. Because now you might use those same beams, but you might rotate them and scale them smaller. I'd say like half as small, like 
in this case. Okay, so there's different ways that uh, structures are put together when it comes to architecture. Sometimes they do this number, like this. Okay, they might have um, crosses or whatever that go across in this area as well. But it might just be a beam as well. So, um, But you can see how that worked out, right? So now we have about the same kind of interval going on, but we need more of them. They almost line up correctly, not quite. Just center it because we can. And yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, but other little elements like this section here, if we split this up a lot, just do this number. Okay. Now watch this. We take two segments and delete everything else. All right. So this one here. We could run a loop cut down it, bevel it, pull it down. And now we can array this one out. Press S to snap it real quick. See? We got just one. Now we bump up the count. So if this was like you could literally model this just like this, right? Just one piece. One little segment. And if it has a repeating texture across all of it, it might get kind of boring. You might want to do a couple pieces. But um, in general, you could do this. If it's a really kind of generic area, why use more textures than you need to? Uh, you could always throw decals on top of this, possibly, um, if you really needed to break it up just a little bit. But a lot of things, you don't even have to do that much. So you know, keep that in mind. Repeat where you can later on. Uh, while you're concept modeling, though, it doesn't really matter. Um, if it repeats because nobody's going to know. You can see like we got a gap here for this section. So how do you handle gaps? Well, just make a stop gap. Something that stops a gap. That's all it is. You know, I, I call them that. I don't know what other people call them, but little hole fillers is pretty much all they are. So you can say like, I need this up here at some point. Right? Maybe not going through the top section there. Maybe something like that, right? Pull that forward. And so we could just make that another big beam, basically. Another trim sheet section, really. And uh, we could make it look, you know, a little more interesting if we just did some chamfers on it. Something like that. You know, we want it on the other side, so we mirror it over there. Now, suddenly we have all kinds of nonsense going on. We didn't realize we were going to actually start creating, maybe. Let's shade everything auto smooth real quick. See how it works out. Okay. Um, so usually when you um, get to this point, you're trying to figure out like lighting, how the lighting might work in here. You probably want to go to your render preview. Okay. Um, in my case, it's set to EV. EV by default has this great background. And the settings for it, I turn a lot of stuff on that's already over here. Um, but we could do like light. We could do um, we do a sunlight if we want, and so one of the things that you need to remember about EV is that it renders back faces by default with materials. We don't have any materials assigned right now, um, but that should block the sunlight even if they're non-manifold mesh. But it's not guaranteed that it will. Like it might might still have issues a little bit. Okay. And so you might need a special piece cut for that back section. Right, and so we got some light bleed going on, things like that. There's only so much you can get away with, with EV, but uh, turning contact shadows on will probably be one of your most beneficial things. And sometimes that still isn't going to help it out much, but I think you get the idea there for the most part. Uh, you want to create some light fixtures probably at some point, just some kind of light fixture that... Um, would be interesting, I guess. In this light fixture, you can uh, create like spotlights or point lights. Spotlights should use less um, performance, but we'll see here in a sec. Yeah, you see, they're they're a little bit tricky to get kind of working and set up. That's the size of the light. That's the power. Contact shadows will eat up more and more performance, so if you don't need them, don't use them. But 
the sunlight I think is one you need. Yeah, and so this is going to be an interior section in, or an interior light. Generally, I don't know if I, I want to use a spotlight here necessarily, but there's different ways you can kind of set these things up. I'm not a big fan of lighting in the EV anyways, but you see if we switch to cycles real quick, that's going to have a lot of bounce light coming off of it, lighting this whole area up. So um, EV, you have to bake that, which is interesting, but I'm not really trying to get that involved not right now anyways if you wanted to like um, take this and turn it into uh, a render that you can do like a paint over on so you can create concept art this way could now I'm gonna take this light select the fixture and I'm gonna control P and I'm gonna parent object keep transform this will make it a little we could have just grouped it but um, it'll make it a little setup like this Notice if I um, select just this one and I duplicate it, it doesn't come with it. So you do have to select both of these. And if you wanted to set them up in this manner, you could. I'm not saying that's a good light fixture or good setup even, but I just want some lights in these areas to um, kind of fill in the void for now. A little bit. It could be wider, I think. You can link lights together, by the way, by doing, um, well, probably using the wrong term there. You can make them uh, linked like this. So you control uh, link object data. And so now all of them, when you adjust one, it adjusts all of them. See what I'm saying? Control L, link object data. Now we can make these a little bit more of like an amber. The skylight here, wherever it is, um, probably wouldn't be direct sunlight, although it might. If it was direct sunlight, you'd give it yellow, like a yellowish tint. Um, so the ambient light here, this gray, you could change to like a darker blue. And you can just kind of see what's going on here now with the lighting at least. And see if it would work out for you. It's not going to be perfect though, the way we're doing it. But it does get you in the... Uh, something to look at at least, right? If this uh, was not direct sunlight coming in though, and it was like ambient light, you'd use blue here as well. Oops, not on that one, sorry. On the light itself. Where's the light at? There you go. This would be like a brighter blue perhaps, maybe. Something like that. So like think overcast day or cloudy day. There's no direct sunlight. In that case, also you probably turn on, probably turn shadows off completely, almost. But fortunately, you can only do so much with this kind of light setup until you have to start adding uh, iridescence volumes and all kinds of other nonsense. This whole segment here, you can also try squishing if it's bothering you being like that, right? Too rounded. So might be like computers back here that have. Um, some light on them, some point lights. Computer screens are usually blue, right? And so, this is of course optional. If you're just modeling, you can model all day and figure this out later, but. And so, yeah, it looks okay-ish, but there's so much more we can do. It just keeps going and going. There's so many little elements you can add. You don't want to make it too noisy, but what we're going to try to do is this piece here. I'm only going to do half of it. So it's like a little drop down section. And I'm not even going to do the detail on it necessarily uh, right now. I'm just going to make the overall like primary shape. Okay, so primary shape is something of a rectangle like this hanging from the ceiling. And then these are dragged down and then extruded down. Something like that anyways. Okay, so there's like these little box fixtures that could be placed over here. Maybe closer to the wall or something. We could snap it to the grid if we need to. 
and we can just um, we could Alt D bring it out, just put another one there maybe, or maybe we want to break up that background a little bit. We could put it in the middle. See what I'm saying? We could maybe uh, mirror it real quick. It's pretty rough to look at right now because of all the weird lighting on it, but. It's going to push them back a little bit like that. And so um, these things were hollow. We'll just do the one because they should all update by the end of it. And when we're in edit mode, turn off the uh, mirror so we can focus on uh, this area. So we can just tilt a key view selected and get to it a little bit quicker. So I just want to take this whole area, do this number. I'm going to press Y, Alt A, align top. Bring it back down a little bit, maybe. So I don't know what's going on here at the top. Oh, no, that's fine. A M merge by distance. Just going to clean that little area out real quick. I can just do an F. And F and F. Boom. So there we go. We got that going on. Might have some kind of little weird box in here. That maybe has like a bunch of wires sticking out of it. I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. I think that would be useful perhaps but I'm just gonna do a loop cut twice pull it forward like that instead yeah answering those big questions like what is this shape and how should it look maybe these are um those cylinders under here oops do this in object mode Actually, no. You know what? We'll do it in uh, edit mode. You'll see why here in a sec. Create a cylinder in edit mode. It does it across all of them. So we can do little sections like that, perhaps, if needed. We can select it and duplicate it. Uh, S Shift Z. Very destructive way of working, but still doable. Yeah, so maybe later on we can set up some kind of wiring system or some kind of little truss system that uh, these wires go up to and run to this back computer section or I don't know what these things would be, but certainly would look interesting if we started using a bunch of Bezier curves everywhere. Things can get pretty noisy when you're working, so sometimes you might want to, um, you can hide certain individual elements, but you might want to use view layers View layers are kind of hidden up here, but you can create a new one basically. Okay, and you can switch between these. So you can say, like, uh, this is modeling view layer, and then this is uh, everything. Right. So you can do nonsense like this, but so in the modeling one, we can start to isolate things we don't want to see. Like we can hide the lights. Right. Just hide those. We don't need them. And then um, maybe we don't need some of these empties or something, right? But if we go back to everything, they'll still be there, right? So you can separate what you want to see, like especially if you're doing uh, larger scenes anyways, where it's like I want uh, all the terrain gone, but just the uh, the houses to remain. Or maybe I just want the terrain and not the houses. Or maybe I want all the trees gone you know you can isolate different things on the view there so it's kind of interesting but um i wanted to do that for the modeling one because i'm just getting distracted by those lights and now I could create things like little curves bezier curves probably would help to do some of this modular like because this could get out of control very fast do some surface snapping uh, and the reason why we're going to turn off I have some of this set from the last video, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but this can get kind of out of control rather fast. I'm going to actually turn off um, Align Rotation to Target, too. It can kind of be hard to see what's going on, and it can get really squirrely. You see, I almost got that right. they got to be, like, slightly off the surface. You can draw... Um, Bezier curves, you can see right here. You can do this number too. 
which is interesting that it even has a little offset section for it somewhere in here <laughs> it's somewhere in here uh, but the, the surface offset right there uh, but that's going to get too too many points basically for what we're doing right now i'm not doing that but you could try it on certain things so you could say like right here we want to take that this way rotate it on z take that on z a little maybe Oop. maybe isn't it quite pointy enough in that area you can take two points right click subdivide between them and now you can do kind of like a little in-between thing here rotate on z snap to surface snap to surface rotate on z no okay it's not quite what i want flip back on x there we go right and then like i was saying this could get out of control relatively fast but it gives you an opportunity to kind of just work these shapes now at least as you say like right here it's obviously going to have to go either below this or through it somehow and but we get this opportunity now to kind of run our pieces wherever we need them and line them all up it all goes to like a little section right here somehow you probably have to make little mounting points get it all to mount the way you want it to For like the surface here because there's no way to you know you're not going to run it all the way against the beam probably it's probably going to be like little uh, brackets and stuff that hold this all together but you get the idea i hope that you can start doing this kind of stuff like maybe this one just hangs down so we can smooth it auto you know try to get like a realistic kind of arc to it you see but now we can change the depth and uh, yeah it seems like this is a lot to do but at a certain point it gets a little bit easier because you can duplicate things right then you can just move it over a little you can say like that's about right it's not too far off this is why you don't want to align rotations right here because the moment you do and you try to snap one of these it's not going to work out now if you're running actual geometry on these with an array uh, it's going to get a lot more complicated and also you can't snap the surfaces quite quite the same way you can also hit l select a segment if you want so you can duplicate it and then reuse it resnap it maybe this one's thicker you don't you can press l again might break these apart later on but you can uh, hit l again and you can change the mean radius make one bigger than the others or something just try to get it all lined up just right you see how they're kind of all going to the same point now almost that's good because we can start modifying these we'll put this one um, this one's already kind of done so we'll do the big one below it it's not probably what i'd do but do that pull this one out further with another point if we want you can see we can start running some the interesting little segments together basically off of just that one there and we'd have to probably wire up all of those right so it could be quite a bit of work involved with this but not sure what's going on there it looks like they're in the ceiling bring it down a little Yeah, they all want to start bending is what's going on. So we'll try getting that one to match this, these ones over here. You just don't want them intersecting really or it kills that believability of it off, I guess. And how you make the little mounts is going to be entirely up to you. Whether they have to go through a little point and all have the same arrangement throughout the whole the whole thing or yeah just play around with that one i think i'm intersecting this one that's what it is how did i do that yeah and this gets you into that little back and forth most people don't want to be in this 
trying to figure out how to make things work and all kinds of other stuff in the way. You could isolate it, just hit forward slash. You'll lose the roof for a second, but alt middle click. Kind of get around a little easier, hopefully. Don't forget, you you will have to create lots at some point on things like this, usually. Not always, but... You're not at the point where you're doing, like, the production model, I guess. So, you don't have to worry about it too, too much, but it could be problematic at some point. I don't know how I crossed those, but I did. And they don't look too natural, so... Probably going to have to... I'm just going to drop them both, I think, underneath that one. Here. You see that's kind of a weird bend there. Maybe I'll fix that one and make these ones run. That. Pull them down, rotate them. You can do them in batches and groups too. That's not possible. can't use machine align on this so you have to hit S, Z, and 0 if you want to do something like that. S, Z, 0. But you see it kind of kills those handles as well so it's kind of meh. Instead you might just place it at 0 um, or place it somewhere. A certain level. Copy like that value. Paste it. Paste it. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so we'll just run it to the top of it. Maybe that's good enough for now. These, I think, are too sharp, so I'm going to press V and do automatic. See how that works out. Yeah, okay. How about this one? Good times, good times. This is uh, this is how it goes sometimes, right? All right, so now we have um, that nonsense going on. Just gonna mirror it for now. That mirror probably should have um, you'd have a lot of cables over here at some point. So what actually happens in this area could get. Pretty wild. So sometimes you have to think about things like this. You might cut one of these because of that reason. You know, it'd be too much work. Maybe uh, you got to move. You can't do it all. At, or you could do it modular, like where like a whole segment would be like a run. I don't know. There's different ways you could try to work it into a modular setup, but it's still going to be pretty rough. It's going to be pretty hard. So just keep that in mind. And so remember architecture itself, there's little things like you might need columns that go up and down or little panels. You can always make those things real quick. Makes everything more interesting. Literally just a box on a wall it can be super. Uh, we're going to go back to grid snapping real quick though. If I can get this thing to move the way I need it to. What, what did I just do here? How did I do that? Um, no, we're just creating a cube. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. We're in the wrong uh, collection. You gotta be careful with the collection stuff. I was like, how did I get an array going? No, I had a... Yeah. Anyways, we're back to where we need to go. And... Everything was real linear or like flat in this manner, right? Like it's just going all the way around the room. So breaking that up could be useful. You break it up like this, right? In a more vertical direction. So you can do things like that. Pull them up. Make them 
could do a column. That wasn't the goal with this, but let's make it something more like this, maybe. And all of these edges, I'm just going to chamfer them fairly large, not too much. Uh, but yeah, we got a panel now. Um, could do like one big one, maybe, or two. I wouldn't want to do two, so I'm going to array it. I think doing three would be better. I would like them larger, but I don't have the room for it, so. I'll have to just go with this for now. I don't want to use an even numbers. I don't I don't generally think it looks that great when you use even numbers. But you can see this is just gonna be one section, right? Like just that little bit of extra stuff going on here. We got three here, three here. It's starting to get a lot noisier, but killing off some of that noise with like this cross section, it, it doesn't hurt, I don't think. Looks kind of good in there. Uh, but we can use these again if we needed to. And place them somewhere else. So Maybe we have like a little one over here and all the wires run behind it or something, you know? Maybe it's not arrayed. And it's... We put it in position first, or scaled to the right sizes here. And then maybe this is just over in the back section here. Uh, let's push it a little bit further. No, no, no. I'm looking at the wrong edge there. Yeah, that's too much. Kind of hard to align these, I think, but... Can't really scale it like this, is which, which is what I'm trying or wanting to do, but I can't really do that right now. So I have to just kind of nudge it around for a minute get it up about right I guess is the best I can do yeah maybe these just hang in front of this and they're on like a bracket that mounts in front of it somehow see what I'm saying And before you know it, you have something kind of interesting going that you otherwise would have not done. These are not centered, I just realized. None of these are centered. This one, I gotta make sure I select the whole group. These ones, I gotta move with it. Alright, hopefully that worked and I didn't screw something up. But that's possible. You can always mess things up too. Let's keep that in mind. So maybe these are on like some kind of platform. And this is drop down. Like that. Right. Um, or let's let's try that again, but maybe they're on a platform like this. Or just a raised section. You got to get some verticality going in your environments and your scenes. It just helps make everything a little bit nicer. But since we've done that, we're not going to go over modeling a whole staircase, I don't think, in this one. But basically, you can use a placeholder that's very simple or stairs, uh, which is a slope. So all that matters on the stairs usually is the slope. Right? It's kind of where they start and they end. It's not a big deal. Uh, stairs can be fairly custom. The individual sections the stair itself like the actual step might be um, modular in nature but the whole you know staircase might be a little bit less modular and so you say like if you need a slope here you need a slope right not a big deal a ramp slope same thing you see that this was not placed on the grid so that I'd have a hard time meeting up with it. Oops, wrong one. Let's do that there. Also, uh, I'm going to pull this one out there. And we can run this one along the wall, maybe. Like that. Maybe it's just a little thing up here. You can kind of see where this is going at this point. 
We got a bunch of stuff under here that's just kind of not lined up quite right, maybe. I'm going to press S, X, 0, flatten that out, and then resnap it to the grid. So now when this is, we can, and definitely make things asymmetrical too. Don't, don't get in the habit of making everything symmetrical, but sometimes this is useful. Sometimes it makes it look worse or hurts. But it does work. We could even make those ramps even um, taller if we move these down like this, right? Technically, we could just... Um, if we did that with those there, and if we merged them all the way up, you see what I'm saying? We could do that whole section as a like a ramp, which would be kind of interesting. Something Sometimes minor things are more interesting sometimes. Uh, when we run around in this place, we might need um, handrails and more more stuff going on up there. Who knows? These things, I don't really care for these, I don't think. Get rid of them. I'll just leave it like that. And... Probably should have squared it out instead of using like a, um, a cylindrical piece. You could do like a big chamfer instead. That would look pretty nice up there, I think, because... We got like cylindrical pieces here, which are okay, um, but usually industrial stuff, I don't know, like, I think that's a little more like um, commercial looking or like hotel-like, not necessarily um, industrial looking, right? So if we do like a cube instead, this might work out better. I just want to make sure it's dead center. So when I symmetrize it, it's in the right position, basically. Except I don't think uh, the center is is there. There you go. It's like there. So, all right. It's kind of the same process here, but instead of using the uh, the cylinder, we just use a, uh, a cube and we scale it in like that, maybe. See what I'm saying? Be like lower than that, lower song. Inset, oh, loop cut, inset. I'm not going to delete these ones. I'm going to delete these ones. And now, I was to solidify this. If I can get it to work. There you go. Let's see, we got something, well, it looks a little more, a little bit more interesting, perhaps. Not as much as it could. Oh, the one thing I'm going to create here before we end this video is that I completely forgot about these. We do not have any pillars to support the roof, or the structural steel, anyways. Sometimes these things are needed, right? And it's really small, but let's put it right there. Let's pull it down to the ground. There you go. Let's see if we can't get this thing to line up first. Oh, it's close. Look. We go up to that one, I think. Actually, no, it should go to the big ones, but I might have them go to the small ones too, but it needs to be more like this. And the big ones are all the way at the front. I'm going to instance this by hitting Alt-D. Some people call it instance. Some people say it's not. It's a ver I guess it's like a variable instance is what the, uh, the word is. I might keep saying that because people get confused what a link duplicate does and doesn't do. Most software you would think of it as an, an instance, but... Programming-wise, it's a variable instance, I think, right? Something like that. I'm not a programmer, really, so it's going off what I think it is. Oh, this is interesting. This is a different height. You might need two different sizes here. Because if we modify, well, here. I'm going to press Control-A and apply scale. It breaks the instance or the link or whatever. So I can just take this one down then. Yeah, so we could do those in more detail if we needed to, but 
that's actually a pretty good little spot for them, other than the fact that this would be real narrow in here. Remember, at the end of the day, you're trying to set up like environments or levels or whatever. This is not. I got a gap here apparently as well. Let's just bring it up a little, maybe. I don't know what's going on here. We'll fix it later, maybe. But now we got all this going on. We can just mirror them too. All right, so maybe that helps out a little bit. Maybe there's one um, a little bit further in. Like you would space these accordingly. So like there might even be one out here. Potentially. Uh, but you space them accordingly where they need to go. And, uh, that's pretty much all that's going to happen, right? So. You know, have fun with these ideas, at least. And we haven't got to, like, any texture work or anything like that. It can take you a while to do environments, even the concept modeling part of it. You'll see a lot of times, like, when people are doing concept environments, it they time lapse it. There's a reason why. It takes time. Like, there's only so fast you can click even when you're making really, really basic shapes and stuff, but let's see what lighting looks like on this. But if you're doing like a actual environment by the end of all of it, like for a um, Unreal Engine scene or whatever, it can run you multiple weeks, months. Uh, it depends on how much detail it is, how much time and effort you got to put into it. It could take, um, you know, it could take you up to six months for some pretty complicated stuff, so. And that's by yourself, you know, um, give you kind of some time frames. There's a Tony Hawk pro skater environment artist that did six months for one map, one level. Um, the, um, the fast track tutorial guys worked on, they just released a, an airport kit. They said they worked on that for six months. Um, duck, duck, go, or, or I'm sorry, duck, duck, go. goose, goose, duck, or I forgot the name of the game. Yeah. Goose, goose, duck, right? Anyways, the um, they work on their maps. Supposedly, they do 3D model concepts with Blender, and then they, once they got the concept they like, they work it all into production or whatever. It takes like three or four months or something, supposedly. And then, um, let's see, what else? The original Ghost Recon, which was a diffuse workflow back in the day, that was, that was like a month-long um, environment project. Any diffuse workflow stuff you can get, you know, three to three to four weeks, uh, no problems. But um, the I know I was looking at one guy that did a corridor that was AAA quality for um, part of his application to, or his it was an art test actually. He was doing an art test for a game company. It took him two weeks to do just a corridor to get it up to AAA quality. So. It, it eats up time, guys. It's not like a, you're going to start a project like this and be done with it tomorrow. It's not usually the case. Now, if you're just like kit bashing a bunch of stuff that's already finished, it's more along the lines of level design, level set dressing. Um, you can do those pretty quick sometimes, but even the, even that kind of stuff can run on for a minute. I'm going to make the sunlight brighter. I feel like I need a, like a different angle on it or something. Yeah, maybe it's all, I don't know, I feel like it needs to be like, um, maybe pushed forward a little, like there's like a little dark area back here. So you can think of like the lighting for the composition as well. This is very bland coming in. It's just a big bright spot in the middle. It's all dark everywhere else. Oh, those lights are hidden, by the way, and they don't display. I forgot I had those in here. All right, so... Uh, really bright in the middle, it's kind of darker on the sides here, real dark back here. Okay-ish. Maybe these are TV screens back here at some point. So you might add like, you know, point lights in front of them or area lights. And so we could change colors and keep them kind of, kind of darker, but not real, real dark. You know what I'm saying? Try to break up this composition a bit. Background would not be transparent, more than likely, which I have set. Um, we'll turn under film transparent off. More than likely, that 
world environment, you know, like this, this, I don't like this setup at all. There's a way to kind of correct that, but generally speaking, it would be brighter, right? Unless it was like dark outside and it was like nighttime or something. I'd end up with something more like this, but even then you could do so much more than that, so. Um, let's see, we go to shading, go to world. It's been a while since I've done this. Let's see if we do shader, mix shader. Copy that one, pull it down. We'll do input. I think it's under input, light path. Yeah, it's camera ray. I don't know if this works with Eevee. That's the main thing. So our background color, okay. Do like a like a bluish sky almost. And then our actual ambient lighting we can adjust a little bit. So now we'll have kind of a break up there. A little bit something a little bit more realistic perhaps, but and these ones we can um control L and link them. Maybe. Still, just it's not that interesting, in my opinion, because it's still like it's a very centered kind of focus. So it's kind of there's some things that are questionable. We could still work with, but do pay attention to that kind of stuff. Keep working it until you get exactly what you want going on. I'd say my main sunlight is that big skylight is probably the worst part about this, but is there a way we could work with it still? Perhaps I'm trying to select, I can't see it now. So if we shoot it all off into a corner, that could be kind of interesting. Not too, too bad. Oh, also, um, if you're trying to walk around and work with EV on, setting the viewport down to one, that's going to cause a lot of like, a, like shadows will look rougher and it won't do samples, but it'll cause, it'll, like if you have stuttering problems, it just goes away at this point. So we can definitely run around in here and start to say like, this is, you know, maybe doable and maybe we want to save this thing real quick as, you know, XO2 or whatever. We still have to build like little segments that end in the walls here where there's like bolts and stuff in it and all kinds of just stuff we still have to really work on and make. But at least we know how to get it started and off, off in the right way now. Make a little mounting sections for all the wires. You got to do all that. Probably different light fixtures because these ones are not that great. Sometimes lighting in like big industrial places, like commercial or whatever, they're really basic. And you wouldn't believe like, sometimes they look really complicated, but a lot of times they're just like big dome things and just very generic, like, which is kind of fun, but. All right, and so now, maybe this is just uh, something we have to access or whatever. This wouldn't feel as bad, I think, if we had more of an environment to work with. Like, one room like this might not feel horrible when you have, like, a whole maze of stuff to go through. Um, and then you can set this up, you know, when you do, like, asset streaming and whatnot. Uh, this might load while you're going through another section. So this could all have its own, like, unique textures, possibly. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can handle the... Uh, performance side of things if you're doing an actual game, right? So, yeah, not too bad. Definitely going to play around with, I think, with this idea more, maybe? Not this particular one, but kind of like in the, uh, the arrangement of different ideas. Yeah, so I'm probably going to figure out how to create some little modular pieces out of this stuff and maybe make those from here. That's what, you know, you, you concept model this. You can add textures, materials, UV map this. You can do a paint over. You can render this out, take it to Photoshop, paint over everything, photo bash on top of it, do some custom painting, whatever. 
uh, you can use this as a complete concept potentially, all right? Uh, preferably with better lighting. So let's try it with the uh, cycles real quick, actually. Let's see what it does. Okay. Yeah, these lights are much brighter over here. Cycles tends to do a lot better. Probably like a 500 watt wouldn't be bad, but maybe even less, a 250 watt. I, don't, I think these size lights would be much higher than that, but you know, you're free to do things artistically, not necessarily by the book. That's a very slow render. Why is it so slow? Control B lets you crop the render scene. So, and then I, it's up here you do view. Uh, control alt b to clear it right so if you want to just control b it'll get rid of it control b you can draw a section out like that yeah so it with some baked lighting it could look pretty decent i think unless you're using lumen in like unreal engine 5 or maybe even cry engine uh, but like unity unreal engine 4 you probably have to bake this right It's not too bad. It could be better. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And, you know, see how you could just kind of go at things and just throw caution to the wind a little bit. Have a little bit of fun with it. And, um, don't get too hung up. Still, uh, still a lot of fun to get in this and see what you can end up with or design and create and all that fun stuff, right? You could do catwalks too, you know, take that verticality up, you know, don't just uh, do a little drop down always, but you see there's no like real good composition, I'd say right here though, it's just not here, it doesn't exist, but, well maybe up here it does, but not down there, so when the character or the player runs through, it, they're not going to get like a, like, oh this is crazy awesome, this is, it's like two in their face right away, and there's no like, um, like if a door was over here and you walked in, it'd be like, yeah, this is kind of cool, but it's not like if you started um, above it, maybe, and came in on like a catwalk above it, that might be a little bit more interesting with like a center focus composition. So this is how you make your, your scenes really, or your environments and stuff really pop, you know? Like you force the uh, the player to come in in this direction, and now suddenly you have like maybe like three big machines, three big monitors, and a console. And they got to run down the catwalk and bike guys down here or something. I don't know. You get the idea, but you can, you can direct the player to go through the environment, just like you direct them to go through images. The viewer can, you know, make their eye wander through an image. You make them wander through the environment the same way, like um, make them drawn into certain things. Um, like if you had a doorway over here that was like bright red, they'd probably see it and be like, oh, I want to go check that out, whatever that is. But if it's just like a little dark doorway, they, they, might, they might not notice right off the bat, you know? So, little things like that. And I think, for now anyways, I think that's all we're going to do here. Shoot everything auto-smooth. I can. <laughs> Guess I can't. There you go. Maybe I just didn't see it. Alright, so hope you enjoyed the video. I will check you out in the next one, alright? Take care.